I think in California especially, the ranching lifestyle kind of gets lost in a way. And um, it's just so easy to find something else that pays the bills. And it's maybe a little bit easier or maybe not as stressful. <laughs> we are the one area that still has some natural topography and a lot of wildlife where some of the urban areas that have been heavily developed, they don't have that anymore. So we think we offer a real, something that's a real benefit to the state just beyond the agriculture that we are trying to make a living off of. Well, I'd have to say my husband and I, we have a pretty good marriage. We work side by side seven days a week. We are together 24 seven. If we're not together, people think it's weird to see us without each other in town, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Today on The American Rancher, we travel to California to talk with some cattle producers that are finding their fortune in the Golden State. Welcome to the American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Today's show focuses on the golden state of California, the most populous state in the U.S. and the third most extensive by area. It's also regarded as a global trendsetter in both popular culture and politics and is the origin of the film industry, the hippie counterculture, the internet, and the personal computer among others. 58% of the state's economy is centered on finance, government, real estate services, technology, and professional, scientific, and technical business services. Although it accounts for only 1.5% of the state's economy, California's agricultural industry has the highest output of any U.S. state. On today's show, we introduce you to a variety of livestock producers from the state of California, from cow-calf to stalkers and commercial operations to feedlots. They've staked their claim, all making it work in sunny California. We run a commercial cow-calf operation. We summer between Shasta County and Modoc County in winter and Tehama and Shasta County. We feed very little hay. Our genetics are becoming more and more important. We're trying to buy the best bulls we can buy. We started our operation with put together cows. And in the last four to five years, we've started retaining a lot of replacement heifers, swapping a lot of our older cows out, bringing those in. We're starting to see the rewards of our newer genetics coming into our operation. But we're seeing just the extra pounds of calf we're getting with less pounds of cow. Here at Bird Cattle Company, we run about 300, 350 purebred Angus cows. Started close to 40 years ago. Uh, my parents bought a couple Angus cows at a dispersal up in Oregon, and we just kind of slowly built up. You know, we're a little different than most purebred breeders are. Uh, most purebred breeders will give you all the data in the world related to output, and we like to concentrate on the input side too which there are not very many people that measure input in these cattle, but we think it's kind of the last great frontier of the cattle business because, you know, if you're only measuring output, you have no idea what goes into those animals and you're not gonna go buy a pickup that gets five miles to the gallon when you could buy one that gets 15 miles to the gallon that gives you the exact same level of output. So we think it's pretty valuable to measure input and know that, you know, if we've got something that convert, can convert at four to one, that's gonna be, really an economic advantage over cattle that are converting at 10 to 1. My dad started with, he was 24 years old, uh, bought my grandfather out of his 20 beef cows that he had. He'd retired from the dairy business and was just uh, puttering around with a few beef cows. And My father had been driving cement truck and working and, and uh, my father, grandfather told him, yeah, I'll sell you the cows. So 25 cows or 20 cows would be $3,000 and that's if you have the money. He thought he was a screw off and wouldn't have the money, but he surprised him he had the money. And he went from those 20 or 25 cows to what he's built today. 
Uh, we're a diversified cow-calf operation, stocker. Uh, we have an order buying business uh, and feed a lot of cattle and feed yards. Harris Feeding Company was established uh, in 1937 by Jack Harris. Uh, it's a 120,000 head uh, feeding operation that's vertically integrated with uh, uh, pack, beef packing house. We have a name brand product here in the West, uh, Harris Ranch Beef. We process about 1,150 cattle a day. Uh, those cattle are all uh, fed and finished in Harris's feedlot at Kalinga, California. Our beef plant is uh, located in Selma, California. The Hart Ranch uh, was established in the 1850s and Blair's the fifth generation. Our daughter Alex is the sixth generation. It's a cow-calf operation and has been certainly in recent times. It used to be a multiple operation where it was grain, sugar beets, cavalry remounts, and cattle. The ranch is uh, part of a Mexican land grant um, and, and we've acquired other pieces put and uh, you know, to put the entire ranch together. San Benito's been in uh, existence since the mid-70s, 1970s, and um, it's uh, it first uh, concentrated more on the, as a stalker operation, in fact, entirely, um, and also a small feed yard on the uh, property, and so grew cattle, uh, brought them off grass, grew them some more in the feed yard, and then either uh, fed them at different facilities and then, or later on we acquired uh, other feedlots. Now we're kind of a skeleton crew, and, uh, um, and, but we started the cow herd in 1994 and essentially uh, began by retaining some of our heifers, that, uh, some of our stalker heifers. We like to have most of our cattle yield grade two, ones and twos and, um, and choice. I mean, that's, you know, we're looking more at something that would be attractive to more buyers, or as many buyers as we possibly can. If these introductions leave you California dreaming, there's another side to the story. It's coming up on The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. The goal of any livestock producer is to use available resources effectively and efficiently to raise profitable cattle. But there are many obstacles to profitability facing today's ranchers. Here's just a few of the challenges faced by livestock producers in California. California has a lot of challenges. It has a lot of pluses, but we have a lot of challenges here. We feed very little hay. Our cattle travel anywhere from 250 to 300 miles on trucks one way, once in the spring and once in the fall. We have a lot of government regulations in California. We're dealing a lot with people moving in close, and with that comes, we've had a pretty bad dog problem in some cattle through the winter. Well, just when we were driving over here, when you come over the hill and you just see how much land is not developed, I think that's amazing, and a lot of people in LA and San Francisco don't realize that, and that's probably a good thing, but also um, it is hard, and I think for California anyway, beef, I don't know that we've promoted ourselves very well. And I think now with like, um, you know, the different groups, Beef Council and stuff, I think they're doing a better job of it, but um, education is definitely key. And I know on our way out, we were talking about how people don't even know where beef comes from. And then if you say the beef is from California, that's just totally shocking. The biggest challenge that people in agriculture have in California is dealing with California water law. And that's why we've been working with all the agencies on a huge project for the last four years and making this ranch efficient in its irrigation system where we're actually putting water back in the stream for protected species. Um, so we have to produce more forage with less water just to stay even and that comes with a financial burden and then all of a sudden you become is this a financially viable operation 
I think it's a challenge and it's, you know, my answer is probably not going to be the answer that you may get in Montana or Nebraska or somewhere else, but, but as I see it from California, I talked a little bit about, you know, um, the environmental enhancement or that we provide the state by maintaining open grasslands. There's a lot of value in that. We, but however, we have to be able to produce an income to be able to maintain this and not break it up into small ranchettes or develop it. And we're certainly not in, inclined to turn it over to a public agency or any, uh, any conservancy. We think we can maintain it uh, better than they can, honestly. But I think the challenge for us is we got to maintain some efficiencies. We got to add value in what we're trying to sell. And if we do that, we think we'll be able to survive. Um, you know, we focus really on a few measurables going forward. Where we've been and trying to go forward, it's the number of calves we wean per the cow that we retain the prior fall. It's the pounds that we wean per cow. And then we also try to focus on our cost of pound uh, that, we're, that we're selling. And we think if we can keep those in line <clears throat> through the drought cycles, through the cattle cycles, maintaining a strong enough financial statement to kind of have enough runway to get through the tough times, we think we're going to survive. California had so much irrigated pasture uh, back in the day and I mean I can remember my godfather telling me oh yeah it didn't matter heck if there was a drought you could always go find some irrigated pasture somebody had and move your cow herd that usually stayed on the hills year round to irrigated pasture and now there's no irrigated pasture around. This place here had uh, reason we bought it is in one of the best water districts around but the first year I, we decided we better drill a well just to have it for a backup to the water district for the almonds. That first year we needed it. And we drilled two more wells since then and needed all three of them during the drought because there were years we had no, no district water at all. And all we were running off was these thousand foot wells. As far as this ranch goes, we're encompassing management from endangered species to clean water acts to health in our cattle and it's not just playing cowboy but we're sitting here dealing with stuff that granted we still want to do because that's what the right thing to do now managing our grass and our cattle and our water in the most efficient way possible that also gives our ranch a sustainable future. One thing that's changed dramatically is um, the amount of labor that um, a ranch like this in California can actually afford. Um, we don't, with all our money going back into you know taxes and regulations, it's we're kind of a, we're, our outfit slimmed down. Back in the old days, I guess neighbors were able to help each other take off time, and they could you know swap days, and it just doesn't happen. I, you know everybody has to get paid every day they come to work, and um, it's just hard to afford that. And so not only the pressure from um, development and, and the increased value of land, which, you know, is tough enough around the country to uh, uh, justify, uh, you know, making a living on, on land that, that could be used for other things. Um, in California, you just, you know, it's extreme. And we found some other um, little niche things that will bring, you know, it doesn't have to bring much, but accumulative if, if you can have enough little rev, revenue sources, um, it will get you through those times you're talking about, the droughts, the down markets, and, uh, and that's, you know, that's, we're not here to make a fortune. Um, we're, we're lucky that we can enjoy this country and, and, and be out here, uh, you know, what people pay for um, for their vacation, we can enjoy it on a daily basis, and uh, and so the main thing is we got to stay afloat. One of the resources many of these California ranchers, as well as ranchers across the U.S., utilize to ensure profitability, is relying on superior livestock to market their cattle. The benefits are coming up. You're watching the American Rancher. Welcome back to the American Rancher. Superior Livestock Auction, the nation's leader in livestock marketing, is a powerful tool, helping livestock producers remain profitable even in tougher times. 
The premise of bringing the cattle to a broader buyer base is what has made such a difference in the whole industry. Uh, you, you're, you raise your calves, you're out in the country, and you have a regional market, and it may be a very good regional market. And they may have some very good auctions, and they may have a whole barn full of buyers. But I can promise you they don't have 3,100 buyers to show them to, or 6,000 buyers to show them to. And that's the magic of Superior. Buyers can get at Superior what they can't get at a regional market. And that's validated, value-added programs that produce the expected result. That's why their buyer base is so big. They get what they pay for. There's a lot of marketing companies out there, uh, but there are not a lot of them that understand how to add value to cattle. Genetics are one component of that. Uh, you know, I certainly think feed efficiency is a component of that. Health is a component of that. Whether you are certified NHTC or GAP is certainly a component of that. But also just the way you market those cattle because everybody and all those pieces need to work together as a team. And at Superior, those people understand that. That partnership's really been, I think, invaluable for a couple of reasons. I talked about just the expanded buyers who are coming and giving our calves some consideration. That's certainly a measurable benefit. Uh, we've been with Superior now, I think, about seven or eight years. And I think there's a lot of intangibles that Bennett has brought to us. He travels California, Nevada, Oregon, sees a lot of best practices, sees a lot of other operations that I would not have the opportunity to see. And so he brings a lot of ideas, recommendations, suggestions, best practices back to us, some of which we can implement, some of which we can't but it certainly exposes us to a lot of things that, and ideas that we wouldn't have otherwise. And that's kind of the intangible or the invaluable part of this relationship and why I think we continue to use Superior going forward. We swapped to Superior about four years ago. We like the large buyer base. We like the exposure, the nationwide exposure. We've had cattle go all over the country from Kansas to Idaho. Just, we like the that our rep is a phone call away when we have questions about our bulls or programs we're wanting to try, whether he thinks it would be worth our while or not. We really like that and how he understands that we still gotta be economical. We can't do every program out there. Let's try to get the program that gives us the most bang for our buck. They have a very competitive group of sellers that sell the same kind of cattle we do, that have the same narrative. And what that does is that forces us continually to bump up our game. And I think the other uh, folks maybe that you'll be in are gonna say the same thing. Because we work, we wanna promote the product and in so doing with Superior Self and uniquely Superior, be it Dennis, all the other folks we've worked, for, worked with in Superior, they do it apolitically. They know to leave the politics at the gate. Because each one of us, it's not right or wrong, it's what works for our operation in a sustainable and viable manner. The success and growth of Superior Livestock Auction is the result of its reputation for honesty and integrity, its qualified and professional staff and representatives, thousands of satisfied customers, its leadership role in industry innovations, and its goal to be the best, most complete livestock marketing service in the industry. Log on to SuperiorLivestock.com and find out why Superior Livestock Auction is America's leader in livestock marketing. We want to thank our friends from the West Coast for giving us a look into their operations in California. Be sure to check out our website at TheAmericanRancher.com or find us on Facebook. We'd love to connect with you. I'm Pam Minnick for the entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.